My first question is, um, do you believe that, that it's possible to tune the brain? Uh, I think it's possible to tune the brain. Uh, it's possible to balance the brain and to switch on parts of the brain that are switched off. Okay, so what kind of work have you been doing in this relatively short period up till now when you've been doing this? And uh, perhaps at the end you could bring in what you've done, the work you've done with your son. Uh -huh. uh, I'm uh, in this new way of treating people since about a year. And in this, this short time, uh, most of the people we treated were people who appear to have learning problems or normal problems in their life, relations, uh, personal things that uh, uh, could be brought back to dysfunctioning of the brain and most of them because of traumas in the past, because of uh, severe uh, hits on the head and things like that, that uh, we even have had uh, young people uh, which was said about that they had lost part of their anatomical brain, which appeared on EEG and working with them that it was not true. Uh, and sometimes, by the way, we took normal flus or headaches or migraines and things like that. And uh, I think about 70%, 80% of the people reacted in a way that they uh, started to function normally and uh, got to higher IQs, better functioning in their lives and learning and all of that. So uh, we also came up with my, my kid, my son, uh, 12 years old. Uh, he didn't have major problems, but afterwards it appeared that he had problems with the ski lift, the T-bar. He was afraid of the T-bar ski lift. He fell off it or he was afraid to fall off it. But, you know, he didn't want to go skiing with us because of this anger, this fear. And after the brain tuning, it was just over and he says, I didn't understand why I had any problems with the T-bar there. Uh, on the other hand, he was doing quite well at school, but I had the idea that I could do that he could do more and better. After the training, he can do more, he can do better, he can read four or five times faster than he could first. What we actually did to his brain was uh, with our computer tools bring his brain on certain normal frequencies people use, 14 hertz, 7 hertz, 3 hertz, 1 hertz. Learn him, tell him what these frequencies are for and learn him how to come to these brain frequencies so that he knows how to be in a normal discussion with someone on 14 hertz or to be open for things he wants to learn or wants to listen to people on 7 hertz or to bring this information to his uh, cortex to keep it, to, to remind it later, or to go to one hertz and to go to sleep when he wants to go to sleep. Now he knows how it works. And we gave this frequency with the computer things, with the lights, with the sounds on certain wavelengths. Uh, and we gave him the feeling, the experience of how to reach this brain feeling so he can just do it and the other thing is that when we tune these frequencies we do things with the left right balance in certain ways so what you also do is harmonize the left right disharmony and also because you bring them together left and right the left side learns the right sides where it doesn't function so it turns it on. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. So, um, how, uh, how long did this treatment take on your son and what role does computers play in this? Would it have been possible without computers? Mm. Uh, normally, when we treat people uh, with these new equipment, um, we take about three to five days for that. In fact, we can do it in two or three hours, and we have treated some people in one to two hours. And actually, the, the, the real treatment itself, the tuning, is about 12 minutes. 
uh, with my son, it took, I think, 12 minutes. And we had him in the course for five days with other students. Uh, but he did listen a lot, and he was not really interested in all the theoretical stuff. But, you know, his brain took it. <laughs> it seemed to be enough. So he enjoys skiing now? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, he wants to go skiing every month, uh, as far as he is concerned right mm -hmm. now, <laughs> yes. Have you seen him skiing since? No, I wasn't no. there. Okay. No, no. Um, so, with the, um, the role of computers, I mean, would this have been possible without computers? And, and what role did they play? Um, uh, as far as the computers are concerned, um, until now it was quite impossible to generate the good frequencies and put it in the brain. So it is quite impossible without a computer. However, hundreds or thousands of years ago, Zen Buddhist monks in India did it with a turning wheel and a candle and things like that. But you know, that takes 15 years. So the change is it goes quicker. The change is it is easier to work with it. The change is that now we have the computer, uh, you can make it visible for any physician or maybe not physician to understand the system. The computer makes the EEG visible. Until now an EEG was, you know, a bunch of lines and things that was ununderstandable. Now with the computer, the computer makes a picture of it. So you understand how the brain looks like inside and everybody can learn that in one hour. The tuning of the brain would be impossible without a computer. To, to make the good frequencies, to have a screen on which you can choose which frequency you want to give, uh, to see what happens when you give a certain wavelength into the brain, and all things like that. It's impossible to do it without a computer. Just impossible. Okay, that's a good answer. Now, um, something about the body changes because we're talking about brains. We're talking about brains, yeah. but also things in the body change. That is so important. We can see in the body shape and how somebody moves. What's wrong? Yeah. And you tune the brain, and you see the body change. Yeah. That's so nice. It's so, so there, there are lots and lots of people who have problems with their body, with moving, and with learning. And. Uh, the computer makes it visible what the problem really is. That the problem is not in the body, not in their youth, not in their genes, not in their parents, but in the brain, that there are parts of the brain not functioning or unbalanced. And the computer makes that clear, visible, and treatable. Uh, up till now, an EEG was... Uh, uh, EEG means uh, electroencephalogram, and that says that in an electronic way you make a picture of the brain. Until now, we put an uh, amplifier machine on the head, on certain spots, and the brain is sending certain frequencies. These frequencies can be made visible by lines like this. And the old EEG was such a, pa a piece of paper with all lines, just lines and patterns, which was only possible to interpret by a very experienced neurologist. And even they, you know, couldn't interpret what we can interpret right now. Right now, the computer takes all these lines in and gives a clear picture on the screen on which you can read what the difference is between left and right, which are the long waves which are generated on which side, which are the smaller ones, which are the unbalances, and which lines your brain produce, which frequencies, which electronic pulses. When you talk, when you're listening to someone, when you're discussing, when you're reading, when you're sleeping, and in former days, the old EEG, it was only while you were laying and kind of sleeping. So, so it's how we do it, but most important is how the computer makes it a picture. And once you had that, you had the key to your system. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, once we have this picture of this, uh, this screen, 
you know what you have to do, which part of the brain has to be switched on. And yeah, that's all. So you trust in it that, uh, so much that you've put your son in it? You've oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I trust this system so much and it is so safe and it is so natural, so normal. Yes, that I, <laughs> there's no problem put myself in it and my son in it. And I would recommend it to anyone who has any problem on this uh, part of his body. Yes. So, Paul, can you so tell me a recent example of this? Uh, I'll tell you a recent example of this. Last week I visited a woman who was having terrible stomach aches and headaches since, actually since years, but especially the last two months. Uh, my colleagues, the spe certain specialists and a GP, had been working on her for two months with the most strong and really the best chemical drugs there are. She called me at night time because she had too much pain and she couldn't stand it any longer. I put her on slowly down for, to 10, 7, 1 hertz and the pain was over in 10 minutes and she was easy and relaxed and the pain in the stomach was gone, the pain in the head was gone. Just one example of general practice with these machines. Just beautiful. How did your colleagues react to that? Um, my colleagues uh, look at this like it is suggestion. It's kind of impossible. And it is so new that they haven't had a lot of information about it. So I have certain reactions from colleagues. Sometimes they're interested, but uh, mostly they have a reaction like, no, this is kind of impossible. Just impossible. Sometimes these machines are dangerous. There are machines who can produce frequencies of about 50 or 80 or 90 hertz and they can be dangerous. You can blow or burn someone's brain. This Alpha Institute machine, this computer generator of frequencies is safe because it is impossible to make more than 14 hertz with this machine. We can only make 14 or lower. So this is perfectly safe, no side effects no problems, uh, no diseases. Someone can have uh, an, a feeling of vomiting and nausea for about 10 seconds, that is all. Okay. So you're going to have a big job to convince the general public, and perhaps this is going over the last question again, a big job to convince the general public and perhaps your colleagues that these machines are safe and that this is the new medicine of the future. Do you, do you understand the problems? What, what would you, what are you, what, do you perceive them, it to be a problem? Um, to put these new methods and ways of treating people and diseases um, is a problem. A lot of colleagues, medical people and other people are mistrusting about any new method. Um, it is unknown. They don't believe that it is so simple and any new method is a problem to bring in a new culture. That seems to be a general idea. But good information and just show that it works will, I think, um, incorporate this new method of treating in medicine. And I hope we go to electronic medicine, state of drugs and chemicals medicine. What problems?